Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at Zookeeper and its ability to manage large amounts of objects and layers in our scenes. It's pretty often that I get asked um, how Zookeeper handles a large production scene. So Jen O'Connor from 4D Artists was able to send us this scene so that I could demo it for you. I'm just going to bring up Zookeeper here and uh, show you how many objects and layers we have in the scene. This is a pretty big scene and on this machine it probably takes about uh, two to four minutes and even to just load. Uh, but uh, we have all of our objects here. You can see us kind of scroll through. There's a, you know, not an inordinate amount but a, a pretty good production worthy amount and uh, probably the same amount for layers here. Now with Zookeeper and its object manager, it acts very much like an outliner type setup where you have your objects, uh, you can select them, you can freeze them, you can hide them very quickly, um, and you can do that on multiple objects really quickly. So I can just click and drag to select these and then click and then freeze them all or hide them all if I want to and they'll just kind of disappear from the scene. Or I can use control click. Uh, to select a few or even shift click to uh, select some that I want. I can also do parenting uh, right here in the view so I can just kind of click and drag to parent things and uh, click and drag to parent things out if I want to. And as I go through you'll see that we get some highlighting happening uh, in the layers below. So if I go down and I select um, uh, one of these lights, you can actually see which layer that happens to be on by uh, scrolling down and you'll see that that layer happens to be highlighted and if I uh, go back up to the top here I can see that uh, that happens to be in that layer. It just gives me a little bit of extra information. Also something that you uh, probably just saw was if I select this light or maybe this light here that has uh, instanced objects in the scene, it's going to let me know what its instanced objects are just by highlighting them pretty quickly. Uh, you can see that we have some groups in here. So if I open up this fixture, you can see that I have a bunch of different things inside those groups. And these are closed groups. If I select them in the scene, or in here I'll be able to move and edit that entire group but there's also the ability to auto open a group so if I actually select a portion like this rectangle you'll see that uh, Zookeeper automatically opens it for me I'm able to edit that rectangle itself and once I pop out or uh, you know select the root or select something else it'll close that back up for me in my scene so if I ever select it here selecting in the scene is something I wanted to talk about too really quick which is if I grab any of these objects in the viewport um, it's going to scroll scroll to that portion in the list so that I can see uh, that this object's been selected and here it is in the list so I don't have to go hunting for it which is kind of a pain. As far as groups go we'll also have the ability uh, right here to just kind of right click and uh, add something to a group uh, link or unlink objects and uh, change their properties very easily so I can go into the properties I'll just click on this one up top so we can see it on the screen and you know change it to x-ray or uh, change its vertex colors or any of these different properties really quickly for the object. Uh, we also have an object to do uh, grouping a little bit more like Maya might do where uh, you can gr group to a point helper. So if you click on this um, it'll take all those objects and it will uh, select them and it'll group them to a point object and then you'll get all of your objects linked to that point object which is kind of located in the same space uh, where your objects are which is pretty useful. I'm just going to pin the layers down here at the bottom to kind of get them out of my way. You can see that we have our layers here um, and uh, of course there are quite a few of these layers but uh, if I just want to kind of pop them down so I get an auto hide out of that I can do that and whenever I need to use those layers I can kind of pop them back up so I can kind of make that as large as I want and go back and forth between them but this gives me a little more space to play with and see all of these objects. On that note you know here we are floating the zookeeper view and if we want we can expand this as, as wide as we want and if we're to do that we can actually grab one of these windows functions and uh, bring that over here so we can drag out a bunch of windows here that way we can really get a look at a lot of the objects in the scene and uh, we can kind of scroll all the way through to see what objects we have here uh, pretty quickly and if we wanted to you know take an object and uh, parent it to a different one or something like that this might be a good view to kind of do that in and we could do that with layers as well uh, so if we wanted to take this and scroll out the layers like so then we could get all of our layers in this type of view too and we'll make that view small again. 
So other options I have for this window, of course, are uh, to dock it. So I can go into this view. I'll go to extended viewports and choose uh, Zookeeper main window, which will pop that view in there. And then, you know, I can scrub through here. And the next thing I want to look at is the filters up here. So if I want to click on one of these filters, actually I'll control click on lights so that only the lights show up. Uh, it'll cycle through all the objects and it'll show only my lights, which is pretty helpful. And if I want to uh, show only the geometry. I can control click on that. Uh, Alt click to show everything else. And that's nice because if I want to create another object manager tab, I can go in here and just create another one. Control click on lights and all my lights will be here just in this lights tab which can be really helpful. I can have different tabs of objects and maybe only have geometry in this one or something like that. I can also take a tab and just create a new object manager. And uh, this will be my custom tab where I might go and filter this by a search list. You can see that in any one of these lists, uh, we can order these by the creation order, by name, object color, the types of material or visibility it has. And you can also search through here at the bottom to find different objects that you may want. So you can see there's a lot of objects named art in this. And if I wanted this to be my art view, uh, I could just go in and type art and everything named art would come up here. So you can see only objects named art or with art in the name will show up. And if I wanted to select all those objects, I could change that filter there. And uh, then all those objects, whatever I search for will get selected. So if I just type in chair, there's a lot of chairs in this scene. It'll filter through, select all the chairs and we'll get them all here. So whether you want to filter or actually just do an interactive selection can be up to you. So you can just filter this. So this would just be my uh, everything that has chair in the name will be in this object manager now. So next, let's take a look at these layers. I'm going to bring these layers up. I'll pin this again so that it's here. And you can see that there really is quite a few layers here. So, you know, if I scroll down, you know, unless I want to maybe drag and drop objects to layers, which is really easy to do, just click and drag and go to any layer that you want. Any objects you have selected uh, when you create a new layer by clicking here to create layer will get added to that uh, layer. If I want, I can drag this view up here so that it uh, gives me a little bit more room in this tab view. You can really organize it in a lot of different ways. So we have all these layers here. And if I actually just uh, undock this, for layers, it is uh, very much the same type of thing. Uh, you can hide quickly any objects. Uh, these ones I know are visible in the scene. You can freeze your objects. To select a layer, you just click on the little arrow to be on that selected layer. And you can set any properties that you want for any of these layers. So if we want this layer to be in x-ray mode, we can do that. If we want this layer to display as a box, we can do that and just kind of check at what they are individually. Um, so you can see the little checkbox next to whatever happens to be set as a property for that layer. There's also some special properties that we've added for some production studios uh, like turn on and off layers with lights and uh, enable disable PFLOW sources with a layer. That means that if these options are active, um, when you hide the layer, then PFLOW sources will actually get turned off. And if you hide a layer with lights, then those lights are going to get turned off, which can be pretty useful. Another great piece of the layer manager here is the ability to do layer groups. So let's just say I select these three layers and I click on create a layer group. It's going to add my group here and I can name that anything you want. You can see that we have all these guys in here. Now I can hide and unhide one of these um, interactively if I want to. And I can also hide and unhide the entire group or freeze it. Now one great thing about this grouping setup is the ability to save or non-destructively add your properties. So for instance, if I go in here and I know that I want these to be in x-ray mode and I go here and I'm going to set this to box mode, we should see those show up on the ceiling as box mode. If I go in and I uh, set a property to the entire group, like X-ray or box mode, uh, you know that'll propagate box mode to the entire group. But when I turn box mode off for that particular group, it's not going to overwrite what was done for uh, these objects. They'll still hold their properties, which is pretty important 
and gives you a lot more flexibility. It's just not something that is cycling through all your layers and setting properties for them. It's actually a layered, non-destructive setup for your layers themselves. One other interesting thing we have in the 2013 version to work with 3ds Max 2013 is the ability to kind of work with these uh, tabs here. So, you know, if I go in here and I set this to a docked viewport like so, then uh, I can also have one of these new tabs that has a docked viewport with a Zookeeper in it as well. So if I want to go to this type of setup, and for some reason this was longer, so you know I could traverse through all of my layers here, then I could certainly do that, which would be nice. One other thing I wanted to show about layers is the advanced tree view. I'll probably talk more about advanced tree view in its own video, but in this case, um, it can be nice if when you have so many layers, if you're just working on a few of them at one time to kind of go and pick and choose and say, okay, these are part of my current workflow for the day and add those to an advanced tree view. The advanced tree view here, uh, I'll just call this cust layers. And when I go into my layers here, I can drag and pop those in here. And that just gives me, you know, a bunch of different layers that I happen to be working with at that time, which is really pretty useful. You can see you have your objects in here. You can go to any layer. You can double click that layer to select whatever objects happen to be on that layer, uh, which is pretty helpful. So I'll just go back to my main tab and uh, hopefully that gives you a good overview of the way that you can work with Zookeeper to manage your objects and layers in a scene in a more effective and feature rich way as well as the performance on heavy scenes that you may use in production. Thank you very much.